Okay. So what we're going to do to this is we're going to recolor it. Now you may be thinking um, it has a little color on it and it's got a little kind of a sepia tint to it, but uh, that's not enough. What we're going to do is we're going to actually completely recolor this one. And just so you guys know, everything that we're doing now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you new photos, um, a new photo of each one, uh, kind of like a little test because I've gone through each one of these with you. And you're going to go ahead and do those on your own. The one for the recolor, I have a, a Teddy Roosevelt one that you guys are going to be recoloring. So for this one, the first thing we're going to do is it's, it's nice the way it is, but we have an issue. Now we're going to be dealing with color. And the biggest issue that we have with this one right now is that it is already a color. That sepia color that's on there right now is going to interfere with the colors that we add. So that light, warm kind of tint that's on there, whatever we colors, whatever colors we add to it, those colors are going to blend. So what we're gonna to need to do initially, the first thing we need to do is um, we're gonna to need to turn this black and white. Now, some people can't realize this is not a black and white image. This is a sepia image. So it's got some red tones in there. So we're gonna get rid of some of those red tones. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Photoshop and in image adjustments, that's where most of my stuff is, is image adjustments. And you can see here, I can do a very quick black and white. So there's this one here. Um, just to show you, there's always a few ways to do things. There's black and white. I can also do hue and saturation because we do know that if I go to hue and saturation and I take my saturation forward, it adds more color. If I take my saturation backwards, does less color. I also have image adjustments, a straight up desaturate. If I click on that, oh, all my colors gone. But if I go to image adjustments and I go to black and white, it adds a whole like level of saturation options that I can, before I go ahead and I Turn it black and white, I can actually adjust what colors I want to be brighter, what colors I want to be darker. So if I have something like, you see the reds here, if I adjust some of my reds to that, if I adjust it like higher, it's going to give me a more vibrant image. You can see that my whites are a little bit whiter, or my darks are a little bit darker. If I go down here, it gives me a little bit more of a gray image. And I, I have a feeling that only the reds and the yellows will be affected here. And that's right. So you have the option of kind of playing around with what you want. But actually what I'm going to do is just for the sake, just for like the ease of use, just to have it as is, I'm going to take this photo. I'm just going to simply desaturate. I'm going to use the colors as is. So the grays that are there are going to be gray. I'm not going to have any, I'm not going to make it any more white than it is. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm working with the blank slate here. Now the place that we're going to be working most is we're going to be working in this layer over here, this area over here where the layers are. And there's one place in here that we haven't really used before and it's this right here. It's your blending options. And I'm going to be working with your blending options for you guys right now. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to make a new layer. And the reason why I want to do this is because if I start painting on the top of the person right now, let me get my, my paintbrush, my paintbrush is over here. You can see it's the brush tool. I can also push B on my keyboard to bring the brush tool up. Once I do that, my options here for my brush tool are here. So my foreground color, which is my brush color, is here. Now, right now it's green. And just so you know, what is that background color? A lot of people don't realize what that background color is. That's actually the color of your paper. It's the color of your eraser. So if you use the eraser and erase, sometimes it'll actually turn it that color. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna choose this background color because that's not what I want. Because if I just started painting her green, that's gonna be wrong. Um, try to think in this for a second. First we do in Photoshop, we choose the hue, which is the pure color. And then we choose the shade or the tint of the color we want. Now, where in the spectrum do you think skin color lies? It lies within the orange spectrum. So if we go to the orange spectrum here, you can find the various shades of skin tones. And you could add a little bit more of the red, you could add a little bit more of the yellow, so you get something you're more comfortable with. Okay. Now, let's say I like that. And again, that's my foreground swatch color right there. So foreground swatch right there. I set it to that color. 
It looks green on your screen, but on my monitor it looks nice. Okay, so what if I don't add another layer and I start painting on top of her, that's wrong. It's not gonna work out. Now some people I've seen, um, they'll be like, oh, well I could just the opacity of it, but that's still, I mean, it works okay, but it's still covering up a lot of what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new layer in Photoshop. And so to make a new layer, it's down there, if you remember, it's down there by your garbage can. So you have your garbage can here to delete, and then you have this little piece of paper with a little fold on it, and that's create a new layer. So I now have a blank layer on top of my person. And I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna start painting. So I'm gonna start painting just like normal. You're thinking, oh my gosh, this is still not working. It's not working. But give me a sec here. Beautiful. There we go. All right. That is looking perfect. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna utilize our blending modes. So we're gonna utilize those those modes that I was kind of showing you before in your layers panel. And blending modes are over here. Now, depending on how I want to blend these layers together, there's different ways that I can do it. It can blend your darks, it can blend your lights, it can do a, a kind of a middle blend where it's gonna blend all your colors kind of consistently. And really, the best thing for you guys to do is I'd like you guys to kind of go through them yourself. So once you kind of paint that face, you choose that layer, and then you start choosing the blending modes. So you can see that Photoshop is like utilizing different ways to blend the colors together. Now I can tell you right now, the darks are not what we want. The lights, definitely not what we want. But we're getting closer. No, we're not getting closer. And what we actually want is we want something like overlay or soft light or be your best bet. Now you're probably thinking, Bar, this is still way too much. And it is. And this is why you're going to also utilize your opacity. Your opacity is here. That's transparency. So the more, uh, the higher the number, the more of a wall it is. The lower the number, the more of a window it is. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn down the opacity a little bit. So we're going to get something that's maybe a little bit more natural. And so I have soft light here. Maybe I want overlay there. There we go. So I turn the opacity down again until I get something a little bit more natural. And now, look what happens. Once I start painting now, you can see it's starting to look a little better. Now, the thing with this is, is that if I just start painting like this, we don't realize that our skin tones is not just one shade. Our skin tones, we have multiple shades of color. And one of the things that we have is we have blood running through our system. And so with that, we need some blush. We need some, the cheeks, the nose, the lips. We need a little bit more of a warm tone in there. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna get my swatch color and I'm gonna go ahead and go down just a little bit to some of the warm tones here. And there we go. I'm just going straight down, keeping the same tint here. And maybe I'm just gonna add a little bit of color to those cheeks whether it's that chin, maybe the nose, just giving some life to some parts. I'm starting to like actually that color for the face. So I may add a little bit more of that color. It's kind of bringing her a little bit more to life than the other one was. And it's really just trial and error. There's really like no like set, okay, this is the color you want for the skin. This is the color you want for that other thing. And then maybe even the lips, I may want to for the lips. I'm gonna choose this red, but now you guys have the option of, you know what? I may want to choose another layer, or I can go straight in. So I just go straight in, okay. That's good, but my opacity is still turned down on here. Let's see what happens if I choose a new layer, and use that color. Actually, I think I want a more of a red color. I have no idea what this is gonna look like. Of course, what I want to do too is, you know, it's kind of on our teeth. Well, I'm going to get rid of that. But for now, I'm going to use my blending modes. Let's try overlay now. Whoa, way too vibrant, right? So we can go ahead and turn that down a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead now and we get rid of some of the background. So if I get my eraser here. Okay. 
My eraser brush is not soft. It needs to be soft. There you go, that's better. There we go. That's looking better. Next step is going to be the eyes. Next step is going to be the shirt. Um, the eyes are a little bit dark, so it's going to be hard to color in there, but I think we can get some color in there. Um, the teeth are already fairly white. The eyes are fairly white, so we're going to keep that. And then if you choose, um, I'd like to maybe even color the background in, okay? Um, and then the shirt. So that's pretty much it for that one. So blending modes is the way to go. Um, again, the blending mode that I chose was overlay, but I'd like you to go through and sample all of them just to kind of see what each one does. And then you're probably going to go to one of these middle ones, one of these light ones here. Um, and then overlay is probably going to be your best bet. Okay, so opacity and blending modes. All right, that is all. Go ahead and begin.